Good morning, everyone, and good evening to those joining us um, in Paris. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today is BCRPU's 2022 webinar series, and today our speaker is Dr. Benjamin Camille. As a doctor of psychology, Dr. Camille was enrolled in the French Institute of Sport in 2020 just after his thesis, working on psychological outcomes for returning to sport after suffering an injury and preventing injuries for athletes. Moreover, as a former elite athlete in football, preventing injuries is a natural continuation of Dr. Camille's research with monitoring tools on the field and in the lab. Today, we will learn about the identification of psychological profiles and study of the effectiveness of a medical, sorry, mental imagery intervention on athletes injured at the anterior cruciate ligament. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. After the presentation, we will either ask the questions on your behalf, um, or you may unmute your audio lines. Uh, we are now ready for the presentation. Dr. Camille, over to you when you are ready. Thank you, Anita, for the um, presentation. Um, my pleasure is uh, here. Uh, I'm here for, for this presentation. I'm very pleased to, to introduce my work to, um, to your uh, group of uh, people. So I will uh, talk about uh, effectiveness of an intervention, psychological intervention uh, on reducing uh, negative um, emotion or anterior cruciate ligament and uh, preventing uh, ACL injuries too. So first of all, I want to introduce uh, some uh, prevalence of uh, injuries on brains population uh, with a talk about um, return to sports and uh, model for predicting uh, sports injury. And uh, after we will be uh, able to know why um, some athletes cannot uh, return properly to sports with uh, re-injury anxiety and uh, oh, it's, uh, it's a main uh, reason for not returning to sports. Then we will talk about uh, a profile study uh, we conduct um, for showing um, how profiles of athletes can um, predict some return to sports injuries or, or um, recovery. Then we will uh, look at um, intervention for reducing some uh, negative aspects of injuries, psychologically and physically, and some hints for preventing this type of injuries. So to be more precise, uh, I need to define what an injury is. So I. Um, here to, to speak about uh, the um, consensus of uh, World Bar and uh, colleagues. Uh, we, define, we define injuries as a tissue damage and other derangement or normal physical function due to participation in sports resulting from rapid or repetitive transfer of kinetic energy. So it is a um, difficult definition to understand what is injury, but you can speak about injury like it's a time loss, it's a, uh, regularly one of the main criteria of an injury, but um, I need to focus on this definition to, to explain all my, my work. So first of all, in France, you have 9% each year of athletes injured uh, doing sports. So it represents 1.6 billion people uh, each year in France. On this one of current six uh, people in France, we can have some type of model like stretch injury model. We can explain how this um, how injury are predicted. The first part of this model um, is on three um, some three type of variables. One are on personality variables like anxiety, optimism, or uh, coping, for example, um, or uh, cop to situation. History of stressor is like uh, uh, when you are um, stressed by the situation, uh, it's like uh, minor or major stress, depending on the situation. I will talk about it later, don't worry. And coping resources is what you, you put in place to cope to the situation if you can uh, uh, um, uh, go to the problem or to evade the problem or for example, of the stress. So the, the second part of this model is more on um, all this uh, first variable interact themselves to predict injury. 
you have the personalities, history of Twister and coping resources on, for example, myself. I'm here for presenting uh, my work and I'm a little stressed because uh, I need to do it in English and it's not my main language, so it's very hard for me. But I try to, to, to cope with the situation. But if I am stressed by an athletic situation um, uh, in addition, I have two types of, uh, of um, and, um, appraisal on a situation. First of all is cognitive appraisal. Like uh, it's a treat or it's a challenge for me to, to cope with the situation. It can lead for me to physiological or attentional change. For example, I can be more, uh, my, my voice is more uh, uh, stressed or I can speak uh, very fast, for example, to cope. And this is a stress response for um, this situation. So with all the addition of the previous variable, you can lead to an injury with another aesthetic uh, potential stressful situation. But you can moderate or you can uh, lower, for example, some type of the first variable, personality, story of stressor, or coping resources with some intervention. There are two types of uh, intervention, like cognitive or somatic. For example, if uh, I need to reduce my stress, I can, for example, uh, doing relaxation before uh, the presentation, and maybe I will be more in capacity of cope with the situation and can't lead maybe to no injury. Uh, this model is uh, from uh, William Sanderson uh, in 1998 and um, is one of the main models for predicting uh, injuries in sports fields in psychology. And after this model, I will present you the model from Wiz Bromshaw uh, and collaborator. Uh, it was um, the model for predicting the recovery of an injury. So the first model is for more predicting the injury, and the other model is like for the response of the injury. So you will see um, many some similarity between this type, these two types of model. But for example, this first part, stress response, predict injury. You have personality, story of stressor, coping of resources, intervention, who moderate or mediate the link between stress response and injury. And all of them will predict the response to sport injury and rehabilitation process by five factors. The first factors are your personal factors. For example, your age, uh, if you are uh, a male or female. Um, for example, it's uh, your injury type, severity of injury. This type of factor can predict the response to, in to injury and the rehabilitation process. Moreover, you have the situational factors. You can also uh, explain the recovery. If you are, for example, um, a substitute uh, of your team, or you are, for example, a captain of your team, it's not the same situation for you. And maybe it can be more stressful to overcome the injury for coming back to the field. The model um, is a circular model in two, two ways, because you cannot, uh, you cannot be for example, uh, in uh, behavioral responses, but you have uh, some type of link with uh, emotional responses. For example, behavioral responses is I will do my, uh, my recovery. I will go to the doctor, for example. Emotional response is like, uh, uh, I don't want to, to, to see I'm injured. I, I'm not injured right now, but in fact, physically you are injured. Cognitive appraisal, it's, uh, uh, if you see the, the, the situation like a trait or a challenge for overcome injury, and all of these factors interact between them to predict the recovery outcome. This type of model is very important in the psychological field because it uh, incorporates a psychological variable, sports variable, and uh, environment variable like uh, um, medical variable too. So, you remember the, the athlete on the field on the first uh, one of the first slide? Uh, he was uh, injured and the uh, ambulance come in the field. He's asleep. So now he's injured. You have the paramedic who grab him in the field and uh, 
doctor will need to examine it, what, uh, what is, um, is injured. So they do an MRI for, for looking what, uh, what is this injury. And they saw the ACL anterior cruciate ligament is uh, teared. So it's one of the ligaments you have in the knee. It's a red uh, ligament you can see in the pictures. Um, it's, main, it's the main ligament of the knee articulation because of some pivots and uh, it can't uh, be replaced uh, for, uh, um, it can, when it's tear, it cannot be uh, recovered. Um, you need to, to do a surgical uh, repair for being able to, to come back. Um, for example, if you are an athlete who is swimming, if you injure your ACL, it's not, uh, maybe it's not very important for you because you don't need uh, ACL ligaments in your knee for swimming. But if you are uh, doing sports like soccer, uh, football or rugby, uh, maybe it's more important because it's a contact sport with decreased uh, speed and change of direction and you need this type of ligament to do all this move. So in France, you have 46,000 ACL reconstruction each year in France. Uh, it's a high number of, uh, of ACL reconstruction. So it's a surgical re um, repair of the ACL. And for example, in uh, National Football League this season, you, uh, they were 57 ACL injuries. The most uh, famous was Odell Beckham in the Super Bowl. Uh, because it's one of the most viewed um, events in the world at this time, and uh, he injured himself in the, in, the, in the game. So I talk about uh, ACL anatomy and uh, all the prevalence of ACL uh, anatomy, but uh, one of the main um, reasons when you are injured is to return to sports. You need to, to know the medical and psychological characteristics for being able to, to come back on the field. One of the main criteria is time. You need to, to heal, so you need to have time to heal. Uh, it takes a long time, between six to nine months uh, in mean, and you need to have a lot of strength in your, in your muscle to be able to overcome um, the, the, the loss of uh, muscle strength when you were uh, unable to, to work. Because between two or three months, you cannot work very good and you cannot sprint, you cannot do anything uh, except some uh, stimulation on the muscle to, to be able to, to come back. Then uh, one of the main criteria is to up testing. It's a, a jump and you need to have the, like the same amount of jump between the two legs for, for not being uh, too... Uh, uh, for, for being balanced in between your two legs, like strength. Uh, the doctor will need to, to check the, the athletes with a clinical examination to, to give his uh, green light for coming back to the field. But we need to, to know about the patient reports for uh, his pain, for example, of the psychological aspect, like uh, the psychological readiness. I will talk about it a bit later. Um, you need to know um, if the athlete is uh, able to, to perform again uh, with some tests. So it's important for him to, to be able to have these six criteria uh, defined to be perfectly uh, well in this, in, uh, in this return of sports. But some athletes uh, didn't uh, return to sport. And one of the main calls is three words. These three words are re-injury anxiety, fear of re-injury, and kinesiophobia. This three word are typically the same uh, or meaning the same for the athletes when they talk about it, but they didn't understand what uh, are the real um, aspect of this world. And uh, when we look at it, uh, we, for example, for a physiotherapist, we are more using to, uh, we are um, most using kinesiophobia. Uh, maybe for other uh, type of um, um, stakeholder, we use some type of those words for meaning the same. So we conduct a study a literature review to better understand the definition of these concepts and to, 
to know what is the main concept about port injury and not return this port. So first of all, we, we do an identification of uh, studies with the screening and uh, duplicates removed. Then we test the eligibility, we still review it, and we added five studies in the gray literature. We didn't found it. And finally, we include 29 studies for determining the definition of re-injury anxiety, kinesophobia, and fear of re-injury. All of this study, uh, three terms are defined like this. Fear of re-injury is an emotional reaction caused by an effective treat of being physically injured. So it's also the main uh, word by uh, doctor, uh, used, used by doctor for describing um, um, anxiety or kinesiophobia. It's fear of injury for doctor. Kinesiophobia is uh, the fear for performing painful movements and leading to the physical injury. Is more used by uh, physiotherapists in the studies, so is a um, term uh, defined by them. Re-injury anxiety is a cognitive and emotional reaction caused by the anticipation of negative consequence of being injured. For example, it's uh, uh, when you anticipate uh, rehabilitation, you know when you are injured, you, you are going to, to do three or four months of rehabilitation, and for you it's very uh, stressful or you, you are not very pleased with that, so you feeling anxiety and depression, for example. And this type of uh, this world, re-injury anxiety, is for more for a psychological uh, approach. So in this study, we focus on re-injury anxiety because it's a psychological study and we know how to, to explain what is anxiety and re-injury anxiety. 9% of athletes, was one on my first um, slide, uh, were injured each year. But how many express re-injury anxiety? In fact, 20% 20 athletes, 20 of athletes feeling re-injury anxiety. It's like uh, 320,000 uh, three, um, uh, of people. It's like uh, a mini for, for each year. But this... Um, this, this uh, feeling, this uh, emotion can be uh, higher for ACL injury. It's like 25 to 40 percent uh, in the literature. So it's uh, uh, impressive for, for them. The first study we conduct to identify um, the profile of um, the athletes was conducted in the rehabilitation centers with two main objectives. The first was to, to determine psychological profile of uh, ACL injury athletes and to compare the profile with medical, sports, and psychological variability. First of all, we took a baseline tests with psychological variables like injury anxiety, depression, stress, anxiety, self-esteem, optimism, self-confidence, kinesiophobia, coping, and fear of re-injury. All of them give us a prediction of the profile we can found in the literature. One year after uh, ACL reconstruction, so it's like uh, when, when they were in the rehabilitation center, it's, uh, they, they were in the um, um, reathletization phase, so it's, it's in the preparation. It's like five, to six months after the surgical repair. So we took them one year after and asked them if they returned to sport with yes or no. First profile we, we found was um, identified by low confidence reaction of, um, of uh, injury. Uh, in fact, you have the mean at zero here and each variable under um, R um, and the, um, the type of um, variable and above, uh, under, sorry, the, um, the other profile. So one of the main um, uh, variable we've been highlighted in this, um, in this first profile was confidence in SNE, uh, was very low, 
uh, compared to the other variable. It means for them, they are more um, worried about uh, their knee, their strength in the knee, and they are not very confident in about, about that. So for them, they think they can't um, uh, do some type of exercise, but there is no re-injury anxiety, fear or re-injury, no kinesiophobia for them. There are no stress, no anxiety, no depression. The second profile identified was the minor anxiety depressive reaction. Is one of the um, profile with uh, general population you can find uh, for some anxiety and stress and depression in the general population. This type of profile is the same of the general population with no re-injury anxiety, no fear of injury, and no um, kinesiophobia of low kinesiophobia. The third profile was identified by an adaptive emotional reaction. In fact, they, are, they score a very low score of re injury anxiety, fear of re injury, kinesiophobia, stress, anxiety, depression, and they are very confident in the knee. So they cope well with the injury. They know how to, to, to be at the good position in terms of psychological readiness to come back to sports. And, uh, they do all the rehab uh, uh, well for them because they know they can come back. The last profile was identified as maladaptive re-injury reaction. Um, you can see there is a high level of re-injury anxiety, high level of fear of re-injury, kinesiophobia, stress, anxiety, and depression, and a low confidence in need. In fact, the two last profile, the, the green one when I highlighted, and the red line, uh, the red profile I highlighted, was the exactly the, um, the mirror of, of the other profile, but in the other way. One very adaptive and the other very maladaptive. You can see here the same evolution of the profile, but with some other variable like self-esteem. Uh, you can see first profile or confidence reaction and adaptive emotional reaction are, are a greater score of self-esteem than the, the minor anxiety depressive reaction and maladaptive re-injury and reaction. You have the same pattern with optimism, the same pattern with problem focused. You have the same pattern but in the other side of emotion focused and no difference with, between the profile with social support system. Um, in terms of return to sports, you can see the here that um, in red, you have the no return to sport guys and in the, the girls, or the people we return to sports. And here we can see for the first profile, 48, uh, 84 percent of people come back to sports one year after the surgical reparation. The second profile was a lower uh, of return to sport, but there is 73 people come back to sport one year after. Adaptive emotional reaction, it's like 80% of returning to sports people. But maladaptive re-injury reaction is a profile very, uh, um, and the, the, this profile was very uh, highlighted for non-return to sports. Uh, because of the um, re-injury anxiety, kinesiophobia, for example, fear of re-injury is very high. So there is not, they are not very good to cope to the situation of injury because they express very high intensity of stress, anxiety, and, uh, and depression, for example. So they, they are not um, very um, confident in coming back to sports at this time, one year after. In conclusion, we identified four profiles, two as maladaptive, and it's very important for all the stakeholders, the doctors, physiotherapists, but psychologists too, to understand um, each athlete in this profile uh, are identified like adaptive or maladaptive. Because you are not able to, to help them um, the same, uh, some need to target intervention for reducing some negative emotional response, for target, for example, the return to sport rates was very low in the last profile. 
and um, you have some limitation because it's hard to generalize to all injury. In fact, uh, ACL injury are one of the most devastating in terms of time period. You are like six or nine months uh, away from sports. Um, and some injuries uh, didn't uh, cop the same. For example, you, you tear your you ankle. Uh, it's not the same length of uh, rehab. You only take from three to six weeks of uh, rehab. So it's possibly not the same for an RF injury. And we didn't know exactly what is the trajectory of re injury anxiety. Uh, this type of re injury anxiety decreases during the time. Uh, um, raise during time, we didn't know exactly for each profile. So we conduct another in, um, study, but in terms of if intervention about these uh, athletes, we took uh, 204 injured ACL athletes, always in the rehab center, with uh, three main objectives. One is to test the efficacy of psychological intervention in decreasing stress, anxiety, and depression. One other is to uh, strengthen or to uh, raise coping optimism, self-esteem or confidence. And one other was to reduce re-injury rates and return to sport time. So we, we do a sum of replication of Google and collaborator studies. Um, it's uh, an whole study like 20 years ago, but um, that this, uh, the study was conducted on the um, ACL injured athletes during 24 weeks. And we wanted to, to do the same, but with better methodological aspects and to a better follow-up. For uh, And uh, we wanted to, to add more participants in the study because uh, Brewer study was only conducted on 20 participants. So statistically, was not very um, uh, strength in terms of statistics. We use two groups, one control who do the rehab uh, like they do normally in the center, rehab center, and one with an intervention based on visual motor behavior rehearsal. It's a, imagery, it's a mental imagery uh, techniques um, developed by SWIM um, in 1972. So it's a whole technique, but it's focused on the um, stressful um, uh, situation and we adapted this um, mental imagery to injury. In fact, during the intervention, we proposed six sessions. The first two sessions were to accommodate the athletes with relaxation. We use Jacobson relaxation because of the, um, of the easiest way to, to interact with the athletes. It's more uh, effective for them to, to contract and to relax uh, with muscle for understanding the concepts than the Schultz uh, training. Then we, we took two sessions for giving mental imagery of competition. For example, we, we put them in situation to, to their sports, respective sports, like soccer. You can imagine them to the 60 minutes of the soccer match, uh, how they cope to the situation, what they see in the situation of the, um, of the game. And the two last sessions were focused on stressful mental imagery with a positive reinforcement of the stress. Because when we took them in the stressful situation, we tried to, to, to do the same as when they injured themselves when in imagery. So they um, re um, relieve, I think it's the term, to relieve the situation of the injury. And we wanted to know when they are not injured. So when they do the same, but they are not injured, all this, or they are in, the, in their mind. So one of the inclusion was exactly the same type of population of the last study. We took them in the reathletization phase. So it's in between the five and six months of the initial injury after the surgery, surgery return. We use psychological variable, exactly the same as the first study, we injury anxiety, depression, stress, exactly, exactly the same. But we compared at the, at the inclusion and 
we had the intervention only for the intervention group between the two uh, the two sessions, the six sessions. So we test after the intervention if there is an effect of the intervention, and we test one year after the surgery if they are able to uh, if they re-injure themselves or if they are returned to sports. Sorry, if they return to sports. And we assess again all of the um, variables, psychological variables. So in blue, you can see the re injury anxiety score of uh, T1, T2, and T3 times period. So here, at the first time, the baseline time, you can see the, the score are very high, but decrease three pre, pre weeks after uh, at T2. In fact, the, the score decreased because of the rehabilitation center, the doctor, physiotherapist, uh, athletic trainer are very um, uh, in charge of um, physical aspects. And uh, they were very confident to, to make progress during these uh, uh, this three weeks of rehabilitation centers to come back to sports. And one year after, you can see the, the same amount of range of anxiety for global population or control population. Intervention group was at T1, no difference uh, between control and intervention. Uh, decrease again at T2, like the control group. But at uh, one year after, they were again lower than T3 and significant. So you can see an interaction between. Um, uh, control and intervention group with uh, um, the intervention, and it can uh, help to reduce re injury anxiety for intervention group. You have the same type of uh, structure with stress. You can see here control group were higher at T1, but decrease at T2 and T3. You have uh, no difference at T1 between control and intervention. At T2, you have a difference between control and intervention, who was lower for intervention group. But intervention group at T3 seems to, to get high level of stress, uh, but no difference because the, between T3, uh, between control and intervention. So there is an, a, an effect of uh, the intervention of, um, on, this, uh, on stress. And uh, we can see here that uh, it's more efficient after only three weeks, because when you come back to sport at T3, uh, sometimes you are more stressed because you are not in the rehabilitation center. And you can explain why the, the, the score seems to, to get high in terms of uh, sport. For seeking support, it's, uh, it's uh, similar interesting because you can see here, there is no difference between T1, T2, and T3 for control group. But for its intervention group, even if you have no difference at T1, you can see an increase in T2 and T3. It's still uh, high. And there is, there is an effect of the intervention on seeking support. So to adopt coping strategy. Here is uh, to test the efficacy of intervention on. Uh, Delay before returning to sports. So in blue, you have the, the line of the athletes uh, for control group. When they are at the 100%, then that means they are not come back to sports. Um, and when they reach zero, they were able to return to sports. Uh, on the horizontal side, horizontal side, you have zero to 450. It's the time you in days you need to take to come back to sports. So you can see here, median time here, you are at 50 and you can see it's like uh, 270 days or so like nine months for coming back with an ACL injury. Here for the intervention group, what we can see here, it's there is a decrease of uh, day before returning to sports. At 50 days, at 50, sorry, percent here, median, they took only 240 days coming back. So um, it's like um, 13 days of difference between the two groups. 
So you are more able to, to cope with the situation of injury, more psychological readiness to coming back to sports, and you, you can come back sooner uh, than the control group. In conclusion of the intervention, um, we, we show here that um, we, we can lower um, psychological distress, uh, anxiety and stress, for example, and uh, we can increase seeking social support, coping uh, resources, for example. We can lower return to time, return to sport time. So it's like psychological readiness. You are more able to, to be uh, effective in your mind, and your mindset to, the, to come back for injury. And one of the main uh, goal between the river study and this one is it only take, took six sessions of uh, mm -hmm. mental imagery. So um, during the briefer study, it was like uh, 20 intervention, uh, 20 session of intervention. Here, you have only six sessions, you have some type of effect. But as always, it's very hard to generalize to all injuries because it's depending on the length, I guess, of the injury. And we didn't know exactly the trajectory of each profile. I show profile uh, on the first study, and we didn't know exactly uh, if the intervention was effective on much profiles and one of them. I come back on the first model I present for preventing um, the injury. Uh, so based on model, um, we can increase some type of variable and we can decrease some type of variable with intervention. Personality, uh, for example, uh, sorry, for example, you have risk factor of personality and protective factor of personality. Anxiety is one of the main uh, risk to have an injury. In fact, Johnson and Varson uh, predicted that anxiety, high anxiety level predict a higher risk of, re injury, of injury. Sorry. In the protective factor, you have uh, three types of main variable you can um, help to, to uh, lower the risk of injury. There is optimism, self-confidence in you and in your knee, and hardiness. Hardiness is such a variable you, you are in health psychology, not really in the um, sports psychology field, but in health psychology, it's like I'm um, very um, confident that I will uh, overcome, for example, my cancer or my um, disease, my illness. Uh, when they took length in the time and uh, hardiness was one of the main uh, uh, main factor of uh, lowering the risk of criminal. But history of stressor uh, can be determined in two types. Stress, of course, um, and in stress, you have major of minor type, like major negative life event stress. It's like, for example, uh, rupture or um, uh, death of somebody you know and can put you in some um, stressful situation you cannot overcome yet because you need time to, to, to need to refocus on the situation to cope with the situation. Minor situation like daily assaults are one of the, the situation you have all, every day in your life like you need to, to take some uh, uh, for example, you need to take car for go to work or you need to go you know, with your bike and with your bike, you, you find your, your tire are flat. So you need to, for example, uh, uh, change your tire. And uh, for example, you, you will be late at work so you can be stressed. Previous injury uh, are one of the main predictor of, uh, of um, injury. In fact, when you are when when you are injured once, you can be much a risk of re-injury or to be injured again um, because you are more um, you are not a Superman um, anymore for you. It's a mindset of the athlete. When they are injured, they are, they think they cannot be Superman anymore, and you can't find it in psychological part. So these two types, stress and previous injury, are a higher risk factor for re-injury, of course. 
topping resources um, was the main um, predictor of uh, lower risk factor. In fact, social support is one of the best way to, to cope with the situation. It's like to talk with somebody, your friend, your doctor, your physiotherapist, athletic trainer, uh, for explaining to him, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not be ready to, to, to overcome this injury right now, but I know I will be able to uh, help me with my injury. Uh, doctor, what is the prediction to my return to sports in terms of uh, months? Uh, the athletes can be um, more effective in talking after um, he, he received, for example, some intervention to, to help him to, to cope with the situation. And it lowers the risk factor, of course, of uh, injury. So in terms of psychological intervention, um, I would say it depends on uh, athlete profile because you need to strengthen protective and positive variables of the athletes. For example, you need to, to strengthen uh, optimism, you need to be more confident, you need to be uh, more uh, higher in self-esteem of you, and you need to lower risk factors and negative variables. Stress, anxiety, uh, depression, you need to lower this variable to be able to be able to not get injured again. So intervention can be focused on profile, but also on protective or risk factor variable. In fact, each athlete is different. I talked about some profile of athletes, but I can, so, I can show you um, two types of case study. One is one of the uh, ex-international uh, soccer player who gets free ACL reconstruction and was uh, very confident in overcoming no anxiety, no re-injury anxiety, no fear of re-injury, no stress on the situation. She was able to cope very well with the situation. But when she injured his four ACL, uh, she was devastated, uh, very depressed with the situation. She didn't know how it's possible after doing such um, a good uh, rehabilitation. And, uh, it's very hard to, to, work, to understand why she were uh, uh, very stressed, very high in re-injury anxiety, because she didn't know that when, they, when she, she was injured three times after before. One other type of, uh, of example I can show is an international soccer player. He was injured first, and uh, it was not uh, express anxiety, but another time he's injured of ACL, and for him, it's God who chose for him. Um, the injured was called by God, uh, his rehabilitation is chosen by God, he will come back when God chose for him. It's very hard to, to cope with this type of profile because he was very stressed by, by the situation. He expressed some high level of re-injury anxiety after that, but uh, he cannot receive some intervention for my part because for him, maybe it's more like um, another type of, uh, of um, psychologist need, uh, like, uh, I don't know the term in English, but like Mahabou uh, in French for uh, people in, uh, in Africa, in Cameroon, for example, who can give them advice or um, help them, them to cope but it's not psychologic, psychological aspect for him. So in fact, they, are, they were identified as adaptive profile, the third profile, if you remember, but there are different trajectory for them in their uh, psychological aspect. So we need to develop specific intervention for each athlete when I saw this type of uh, case study. Um, one of the main uh, subjects is to monitor athletes. In fact, this is a powerful uh, instrument we have in psychology right now. Um, the whole psychological part was to, to observe to, with a microscopic optic, uh, but now we have an um, uh, electronic uh, microscope. So we can focus very uh, much on the 
on the trajectory on day, for example, of the athletes. Can like you 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 have the for example watch with the air rates on your your on your wrists and it can uh, be monitoring for them, but on the psychological aspect. Here, the graph is I can show you is a graph of uh, athletes for the uh, sleep duration on in violet in uh, purple part. Sorry, um, so you can see here the the, the, the um, hour of sleep each day. You have a um, green, uh, green um, line here is for the quality of sleep. When the quality of sleep is uh, on the top, it's you are perfect sleep. When you are on, uh, on the bottom, you are like a very uh, bad sleep. You, you wake up uh, very often during the night, for example. You can have uh, some sleep uh, tired uh, the morning in orange line and in red line. Uh, when you are higher, in the top, sorry, of the graph, you have a tired, you are very tired, and when you are uh, on the bottom, you are not very tired. You are very uh, relaxed, uh, and you can uh, do some activities for them. So, targeting some um, monitoring for the athletes, maybe it's another way to to help them to to better understand how they interact because. It's their perception of sleep. It's their perception of quality of sleep. It's not the same as me, it's not the same as you. It's there at the home. So it's important to focus on what they understand to, to the situation. One of the topic I addressed in this presentation was injuries potentially devastating, physically, but also psychologically. So, we need to target individual intervention if it's possible. Because of the difference I can uh, show you with the case study, for example, for each type of profile, you can address some each type of profile to address negative of consequences of injury, for example, or to uh, strength protective factor for the athletes who are considered as adaptive. For example, you can uh, reinforce their uh, optimism, their confidence, and lower their risk factor, for example, for a profile who are uh, very uh, depressed or uh, very uh, anxious, worry, you can um, probably help them with uh, pre uh, preventing um, them with some intervention. Targeting individual preventing routine, some behaviors they pick. Um, for example, I can I, I show you some type of uh, monitors for athletes with sleep. But you can so say the same for food habits or hydration, and you can monitor them and help them to have preventive routines. For example, you can tell an athlete to go to bed earlier, to take a, a better sleep quality, to help them to, to feel not tired. So it's very important for them. You can do that, not only physically, but also psychologically with, uh, for example, motivation for anxiety in the term of day, stress, you can do that, I guess, uh, with preventive routine. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I will be very pleased to, to answer all of your questions. Thank you, Dr. Camille, for your presentation. Um, so if any of you have any questions, feel free to either use the chat box below um, or if you want to unmute your audio lines, um, you can also ask questions there. If you put them in the chat box, I can ask them on your behalf. Uh, hello. Uh, maybe one question that I can ask is like, oh, was this um, like when you implemented your 
your protocol for athletes to recover? How was it received by the athletes? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, how, the, was the your, um, how was it received by the athletes compared to what they had before for their recovery? When you implemented your own protocol, how was it received by them? Um, in fact, uh, the athletes uh, were identified as uh, national or international players. So they are already, or most of them, uh, have some psychological aspects or prepare, uh, mental preparation. So they need, they, they know how to, to, to have some relaxation, some uh, mental imagery. Some didn't have imagery, uh, mental imagery, for example, but uh, they were able to understand what uh, mental preparation can add to them in their um, performance. Uh, they can uh, add uh, uh, some percent uh, uh, more of person performance with uh, mental preparation and they understand um, very well about that. I don't know if it's your answer, your... Okay, thank you for your question. Thank you. Dr. Kabil, we have a lot of thank you uh, notes in the chat. I'm not sure if you're able to see the chat, but we have a lot of thank yous. Um, and your presentation was very clear. So if we don't have any more questions, I would like to thank you, um, Dr. Camille, once again um, for your time with us. I know it's getting late in Paris now. Um, and thank you for everyone who joined today. Uh, the details on our next webinar will be available via our BCRPU e-newsletter and website. And we look forward to having you join us again. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.